Right, we have one of these to look at today, which I think should be good fun. Um, it's something that a lot of you have requested for a long time, but I've only just got around to making a video on it, and I've only really just got one. It's a Chinese TF1 gas mask, or TF1 respirator, and you might immediately realise what this looks a lot like. It's basically the Chinese um, version of a Soviet SHM mask. It's not really directly a GP5, it's not really directly an SHM41. The, it's got you know plastic parts rather than metal. The diaphragm isn't exactly, um, the intake outtake sort of valves aren't exactly as you'd expect one. Now one thing I found funny is here's the bag for it. And you might be able to tell from the bag that the writing is actually in reverse. So you'd need a mirror to read it. I have no idea why they've done it like that. But um, yeah, that's a bit weird. So just to show you that, there's a picture of a kind of GP5 like thing on there but then where it's got like their email and everything else that is actually, see on the camera at least on the viewfinder for me the email is readable but to the actual human eye um, all of this is in reverse <laughs> bit silly. so you get this tiny little filter with it and here is the mask uh, this one was totally brand new, any marks on it are ones I've put on it where um you know, I was having a look at it the other day. So, basically, what the TF1 is, is a modernised GP5, if you want to think of it that way. Um, you've got plastic intake-outtake valve. It is a bit more like the SHM41s and the GP5. It's a bit longer, but it's not really, you know, identical to any of them. The eyepieces are slightly larger than the SHM masks, but not by a big deal. Um, and they're obviously made of some sort of plastic, not um, glass. The hood is uh, a bit thicker than the GP5s, and it's definitely a more modernish rubber. Um, it does feel a bit like a latexy material, though. And that, if you can see it, is the inside of the mask. I'll just do the standard thing and flip the mask back to front. Still, it's hard to see. Um, but yeah, that is the inside of the mask. If you're familiar with what an SHM mask looks like on the inside, you see the Tissot tubes there, it's almost exactly the same. I'm having a bit of a job getting the hood to fold back the way I want it, there we go. I've noticed compared to actual SHMs, it seems to be a bit more of a chin indent here, and the nose section seems slightly larger. All these things are kind of hard to notice unless you put it side by side with an SHM mask. The ridge lines in the hood are also a bit more pronounced on these than the SHMs, but fundamentally they're the same thing. I couldn't see a production date, sadly, on the mask, because that would be interesting, but there doesn't seem to be any serial numbers or anything on these. Um, it's size 4, and it turns out a Chinese size 4 is quite similar to a Soviet size 3, so thankfully this seems to fit me. With Soviet masks, I'm normally sort of size 2, but I find size 3 will make an airtight seal as long as I put the mask on properly. So put that on in a second, but the thing that's really interesting with these is the filter, and I guess this is just designed as an organic vapour industrial filter, but you've got a very basic particulate layer at the top, a very basic particulate layer at the bottom, but you'll notice there it's got a screw, so you can unscrew it and get to the activated charcoal granules inside, so once the filter expires you can actually just simply open it up this way, pour the filter contents out, um, buy some more activated charcoal in a bag, you can buy that for aquariums, it's quite a cheap way of doing it, refill it and then just reseal the filter, which is brilliant. Um, now, this wouldn't give you very good particulate protection, as said, because I guess that's only like the equivalent of a P1 or P2 layer and it's fairly thin. It's just to keep the charcoal from, you know, falling out the filter either way, really. But what I would say is that it would easily be possible, looking at the size of this, if you wanted to, to um, cut down a bit of the charcoal in it. And then, like I did with those P3 filters, cut a P3 pad maybe at the front, fit that to it, and then you've got, you know, um, an actual functioning NBC CBRN filter, basically. Now, I'm assuming this is basic charcoal that's not been impregnated with anything. This means it's probably only going to work well against organic vapour, maybe inorganic vapour. But it's quite interesting. The filter's got one date of 2006 on it, and another date of... 2017 October, so I'm assuming this expired in October 2017, now it's being sold, you know, as surplus, I ordered this in yet near the end of December, so I'm just trying to work out if that's a dead bug on my mask here or if it's just a bit of thread, 
Oh, it's gone now. Um, anyway, so I'll put the mask on and put the filter on, but what will interest you is this seems to be both compatible with NATO and packed filters, because lots of Chinese masks have standardised threads. So just to show you of its default filter. That screws in like that. Put the mask on. Well, right, it seems to be pressurising, just get the chin bit a bit more comfortable. Uh, you can probably barely hear me in this because uh, I said it is um, an SHM style mask, so there's always that, but yeah. Has all the drawbacks and features of a GP5, really, but it's fairly comfortable to have on. So let me just demonstrate it with other filters. Okay, so first, when a mask pole sort of normalise filters, so I guess this is meant to either be NATO or Warsaw packs, but obviously this does fit the Ghost mask, which is why I want to use it as an example. And if I hold that at the right angle and screw it in, it feels tighter than the Chinese filter, but I don't seem to have to force it. Um, I haven't done an airtight test of these on, I'll do that at a later point, but it seems that it actually fits, you know, fine. Now, the one I imagine a lot of people will be interested in is, do NATO filters fit it? This is a Scott Particulate Level 3 NATO filter. Oh, it's 40mm NATO thread, and yeah, look at that, screws in easily. So you could have it with um, just a particulate filter if you wanted as well. But, yeah. Obviously, for today, I am going to test it with the filter it came with, because that makes sense, because as far as I can tell, there's nothing dodgy about it. Now... I know some people do worry about asbestos in Chinese filters. Looking at that top particulate layer, I cannot work out what material it is made from. It is something that is fibrous, but I kind of doubt it's asbestos. But anyway, it's all very new and in good condition, so if it is asbestos, I'll take the risk that it's not really going to fall apart because it's a brand new filter. So let's put this one back on. Right, that's on. Now let's test the mask and see if this thing actually works. Right, hopefully I'm in frame properly. So what I'm going to do is put the mask on, test it with the banana oil first to test the seal, seem alright, then I'll use the air freshener. Right, not sure if that's pressurising or not, because it's hard to do with this filter on. So. Yeah, right, I can smell banana oil through the filter, so I think the filter's going to fail this test because probably the charcoal inside's already long since expired. But let's just do the test anyway. The mask seal seems fine, but I think the filter's going to fail us. Because one of the problems with this filter is when it came, it had no seals on it. So <laughs> I think that's a bit, you know, um, design flaw there. But, like I said, this is going to be an interesting filter because I'll be able to refill it myself. So at some point I'll do a video on that. Anyway, if this filter fails to test the mask, what I'll do is I'll then put a NATO filter on it and we'll test it with a NATO filter. But there you go. I'm immediately smelling that, so what I'm going to do is just quickly, before the, the vapour starts overwhelming me, put a NATO filter on the mask. Alright, I return with a NATO filter on this mask, and at the moment I can't smell anything, but I'm just going to spray some more air freshener just in case enough left the room that it's, you know, stopped my sense of smell. No, I can't smell any of that so far. So I would assume that this mask does have the combination thread, the normalised thread the Chinese like putting on their masks during the Cold War, and they obviously still do today. Which is really good, because it means you can use the mask with both NATO filters, and Warsaw Pact filters, Gust filters. And, you know, whatever filters the Chinese use as well. So as far as I'm aware, any 40mm filter will fit this mask. 
So this would actually be a really good mask to buy if you want a really cheap respirator for, for protection from things. The reason being, if you find one of these on eBay, they are like £12 to buy with free postage. It seems that's the kind of going rate for these masks. And um, you can put any sort of filter on them you want, as long as it's 40mm. And you can refill the Chinese filter yourself as well. So if that filter's um, you know, not working, uh, no problem. Just put a new filter on it or refill it. So big thank you to one of my subscribers who sent me a link to one of these on eBay. Sorry, I can't remember who it is off the top of my head. But he um, basically found one of these for sale. They hadn't called it the TF1 um, in the selling description. They basically just, they done that normal thing of putting loads of buzzwords in the title. They said something like paint sprayer, Soviet, industrial, chemical, blah, 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 blah. You know, like mask like that. It didn't say Chinese TF1 anywhere in the name of the mask. But this is what it is. So... Yeah, it seems to be working absolutely fine. Um, obviously, I've got a combined NATO uh, particular and sort of CBRM filter on there, so that's working fine, particular and vapor filter. And I said it's great because it fits NATO threaded filters with no problem. It takes Warsaw pack filters, it seems no problem as well. And it comes with a refillable filter, so even if that's expired when you get it, for not much money, you can buy a bag of activated charcoal and refill the filter yourself. Uh, where did I put that filter? I probably put it in the other room. In a minute I will actually open that just to show you what's inside, seeing as it's long since expired, I'm not going to do that, so you might as well see what's inside even if I spill some of the charcoal. Alright, I didn't start timing this when I first put this on in the room, but I guess it's been a couple of minutes now with the new filter on. And yeah, as far as I can tell, this mask is making an absolutely perfect seal. Obviously, you see every time um, I breathe out, it starts fogging up a bit, and then when I breathe in, it clears it. So, the Tissot system in the mask works, but like a GV5, there's no oral nasal cup. I mean, most of your air is directed downwards, but warm air rises, so... But yeah. Chinese TF1 seems very good for the price. If you think for £12 roughly you can buy a gas mask that's never been used, only a couple of years old it seems, sitting in storage. And um, it works with any any like 40mm filter at all. That seems to be great. Right, let's just break the seal to test the vapors in here. Mm, yeah, I can smell that easily. And I can't smell it again. So let's have a look at this filter that comes with the mask. Now, uh, but overall, yes, I would recommend this mask. So yeah, the only bad thing about the mask is the filter, and for whatever reason, this, obviously I assume that is the expiry date. Now, if this had come with a cap on it and some sort of bottom plug, I think the filter would have worked fine. I think it's simply because the filter is just a simple charcoal filter and it's been open for so long, you know. Just totally exposed to the elements, that's why it's expired. But anyway, let me show you what's inside. So you first twist this bit off. You lift that out, that's the top cover. Then there's this little bit here, which is obviously keeps that bit in, so we'll pop that into the lid. Then there's your sort of filter pad there. It's like your very basic particulate filter. So I'll pop all those into the lid for now. And then this is your activated charcoal filter. So let me just point the camera down so I don't spill this everywhere. So activated charcoal is literally these little granules and obviously there's quite a lot in this filter even though this is a relatively small filter it goes all the way down to there where it hits the other filter pad no real smell to it but yeah activated charcoal works by having a very high absorbency of actual you know a very high surface area and the idea is that obviously and get that in frame properly, probably need to point the camera down a bit more, sorry. Right, um, yeah, so all of these little carbon um, kind of charcoal granules have a very high surface area and chemicals stick to that surface area called adsorption, not absorption, but adsorption. So they all stick to that surface area and that's a very, very efficient way of, um, 
you know, like actually catching this sort of stuff, the chemicals in the air. So what I will do at some point is order a bag of activated charcoal granules, probably from an aquarium sort of supplier, pour all the ones that are in here into the bin, and then what I will simply do is, um, you know, refill it. I might actually pack it a bit looser than they've done this one, just so it doesn't spill out as easily when you open it. And then the process would simply to be, put this back on, this is what I was saying, this is where you could actually probably cut a P3 filter pad into shape and then have a P3 filter on the front of it as well. So, what we do now, screw that back on. And there we go. All right, let's pan the camera back up. Is it looking at my face? Yes, it is. Right. So that is your um, Chinese filter, the very basic chemical ones. I said, unfortunately, this one is totally expired because I could smell the banana, banana oil and the air freshener straight through it. But the mask itself works. That's what we bought, wasn't it? The mask, not this filter. This is interesting because I can at least refill it rather than going, oh, it's an expired filter that can, you know, just sit somewhere. But yes. The Chinese SHM GP5 copy, whatever you want to call it, is actually very good. Um, all the parts seem fine, yeah, the plastic looks a bit cheap down there, but what would you rather have, a metal one that only takes GOSS filters, or a plastic one that can take any kind of filter that's 40mm threaded? I think we'd rather go for that one, because as I said, the NATO filter went on fine, I couldn't smell anything, and I know that filter would not fit on the GP5, because it's, um, is that just a C2 filter I tried it with? Yeah, it's just a C2 filter, you know, the very bad chromium one, ooh. Um, but yeah, it actually, C2 filters, which wouldn't normally fit any of the Ghost masks, because I've tried it before, and it's never made an airtight seal with a GP5. Put it on the TF1, and uh, yeah, it makes a seal. And there's no magic to it, you just simply, obviously, get the mask, get the filter, And there you go, you have a working NATO filter on a GP5 type mask. So, um, there you go. So, yeah, if you were looking for these on eBay, uh, you could try searching TF1 gas mask or TF1 respirator. But if you just literally look for um, paint sprayer respirator, paint, spa paint, spra uh, paint sprayer gas mask, industrial gas mask, whatever, uh, I'm sure you'll eventually find one of these for sale from Chinese sellers that ship worldwide um, and they seem to include free postage in the price of the item and that's about 12 to 13 pounds one of these for one that seems to be essentially brand new because it came in the bag you know it was all very neatly folded and immaculately clean when I first opened it so there you go if you are interested in a Chinese TF1 um, you can get them on eBay for not very much money at all and for your 12 or 13 pounds you have a respirator that would fully protect your eyes, face and respiratory system and that works with NATO filters. So this seems to be like one of the cheapest working gas masks you can actually get now. And when I say work I mean it really does work because it can take NATO filters.